This is a GCSE presentation looking at anaerobic respiration. Respiration is a chemical process that results in the release of energy. What is the energy needed for? So what are the purposes of that energy? Pause the presentation, come up with your best answer. You're looking for three things. And when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. So pause now. Well, the three things that the energy required for it are number one, building larger molecules through chemical reactions. Two is movement in terms of muscle contraction. And the third one is in terms of keeping warm to organisms that generate their own body heat. In this lesson, we are going to identify the sites of respiration, so where respiration actually occurs. We're going to look at the process of anaerobic respiration, and then we're going to make some comparisons between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. In an earlier presentation, we've looked at aerobic respiration, which is a chemical reaction in which glucose and oxygen are converted into water and carbon dioxide, and it results in the release of energy. For aerobic respiration to occur, there must be oxygen present. If there is no oxygen present, then we will start with a process known as anaerobic respiration. Now, there are other reasons for anaerobic respiration, which we'll come back to later. Anaerobic respiration is referred to as incomplete oxidation. Oxidation, remember, is a chemical reaction in which oxygen is added to a substance. The glucose is oxidized because oxygen is added to it. In anaerobic respiration, because we have no oxygen, we talk about incomplete oxidation. So how does oxygen actually become limiting? Well, there's a number of ways. In animals, there's only a certain amount of oxygen that can be carried around the blood because there's only a certain number of red blood cells. There's only a certain maximum speed that the heart can pump. There's only a certain amount of gas that we can get into our lungs and there's only a certain number of breaths we can do every minute. At some point, we just cannot get any more oxygen to the cells any quicker. In terms of plants, you also have plants that inhabit areas which are quite heavily waterlogged, for example, on marshland. And again, oxygen gas then becomes a bit of an issue. In anaerobic respiration, there are two types. The first type occurs in animals and bacteria. And that is when glucose is turned into lactic acid. Remember, in that chemical reaction, there is a small amount of energy released. The other type of anaerobic respiration occurs in yeast and in some plants. And it's when glucose is converted into ethanol, which is a type of alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Again, only a small amount of energy is released in that reaction. Notice for anaerobic respiration, you are not asked for chemical equations. So if a question in the exam says about what is the chemical equation for, you know they must be talking about the other one, which is the aerobic one. Fermentation is the name given to a particular type of anaerobic respiration that occurs in particular types of organisms. It's when the glucose is turned into ethanol, which is an alcohol, and carbon dioxide. There are several industries that make use of this process. The ones that you need to be aware of are the fact that the ethanol, which is an alcohol, is actually used in the production of alcoholic drinks, and that the carbon dioxide is important in the production of bread products. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Remember when comparing, you have to say that Aerobic is this, but anaerobic is this. If you simply say aerobic is, that's not enough of a comparison. You've got to make sure you talk about the two things you're comparing and make sure it's clear which statement relates to which process. So compare aerobic and anaerobic. Pause the presentation now, and when you're ready, you can restart and check your answers. In terms of aerobic and anaerobic respiration, the first thing that should pop into your head is aerobic requires oxygen, anaerobic there is no oxygen involved. You can also talk about it in terms of the substances produced from anaerobic and aerobic. 
In aerobic, we produce carbon dioxide and water, always. In anaerobic, it depends on the organism. Depending on the organism, we could produce lactic acid or we could produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. You need to make very, very clear in the exam, if they ask you about a particular organism, quite often it's yeast, that you state that yeast produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. Do not say about yeast producing lactic acid because it would be wrong and it costs you marks. The next big thing you need to talk about is that in aerobic respiration, that chemical process results in a release of a lot of energy. In anaerobic respiration, the chemical processes only release small amounts of energy. You also need to know about where they occur. Aerobic respiration occurs in mitochondria, whereas anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm. Remember, the cytoplasm is the liquid that's found inside all cells. What you've got is you've got a column for aerobic respiration, a column for anaerobic in animals, cells, and bacteria, and then a column for anaerobic in plant cells and yeast. All you have to do is on the left hand side, answer each question and match it up to each of the relevant types of respiration. Pause the presentation now and when you're ready, you can restart and check your answers. Well, in terms of answers, is oxygen used as a reactant? Well, in aerobic it is, in the other two, because they're anaerobic, it is not. Is glucose used as a reactant? Well, yes, in all three cases, respiration requires glucose. Sometimes other substances can be turned into glucose, for example, glycogen or lipids can be turned into glucose for respiration, but we always need glucose. What gets produced? Well, in aerobic respiration, of course, we always produce carbon dioxide and water, but in the anaerobic respiration in animals, we produce lactic acid. The anaerobic in plants and in some plants and yeast, we produce ethanol, which is an alcohol, and carbon dioxide. In terms of energy release, you only need to know if it's a lot of energy or a small amount of energy. Remember, aerobic produce, aerobic releases, don't use the word produces, always use the word releases. If you write the word produces, you will be marked wrong. It releases a lot of energy, whereas the anaerobic releases a small amount of energy. And where in the cell does it occur? Well, the aerobic occurs in the mitochondria, whereas the anaerobic, regardless of which type, always occurs in the cytoplasm.